Hey guys and welcome back to the Run Engine 4 tutorial. Today's just going to be a quick one of showing you how to recenter or reset the position of your camera in third person. So this is quite a common thing in games, it's just a useful little mechanic for the player. So I'll show you what it's going to look like. So we can just walk around, we can move the camera to wherever you want. If we press R or any button you want, it's just going to move the camera back to our original position here so we're facing forward. So again this is just a nice little easy mechanic that you have just to help the player out. If they get lost or their camera is in a position they don't want it to be in, you can just move it back there like so. So again, it's just a nice little ease of life kind of mechanic. So let me delete this code and I'll show you how I've done this. So what we're going to do first is open up our character blueprint. So for me that's content, third person PP, blueprints, third person character, but for you this could be third, first, or whatever you've named it. In here we want to find some empty space, so I'm going to scroll down here, get to this empty space, and we're going to create an action mapping. So to do that, we're going to go to edit, project settings. Once this loads, we're going to go down to input on the left down here, like so. And we're just going to hit a plus action mapping. Now, don't worry about these other action mappings I have here. These are from previous tutorials. So I'm going to hit the plus action mapping there. Rename this to be reset camera. But you can have this as absolutely whatever you like. I'm going to set this to be the R key, as I want the player to reset it on the R keyboard event. But you can set this to be absolutely whatever you like. Again, this is just what I want. Now, if you're using R, be careful that the reset VR is also on R. But I'm not using the VR, so that doesn't matter to me. So I'm doing this like so. We can just close that like that. Now back in our character blueprint, if we right click, we can search for that. So I named mine Reset Camera. And you see we have Action Fence Reset Camera there. So we're going to be using this. So the benefit of the action mapping is you can set it up to be multiple keys. So you can have more than one key. Uh, you can set it up for different consoles and you can also set up key bindings. So whichever key that you press, it's going to come out of this. Out of this, so we're going to come out the pressed, we're going to add a timeline. Now we're doing the timeline so this is a smooth transition. So let's add that like so. And I'm just going to name this one Reset Camera Transition or anything along those lines. And we're going to open that up straight away. Or first off, sorry, we'll put it into play from start and then open it up straight away by double clicking on it. In here, we're going to set the length to be how long we want this to take. I want it to be fairly quick, so I'm going to set it to 0 0.5 or 0.5 seconds, so it will take half a second to reset the position, as like I say, I want this to be fairly quick. Then we're going to add a float track here, and I'm going to name this one Reset Track, or anything like that, whatever you like. On this, we're going to right click, add a key to curve float with a time of zero, value also zero, so it's at the very start. I'm going to add another one, so right click, add key. This is going to be at the end of our timeline, so for me that's length of 0 0.5 and a value of one. So it's going from the start to the end of the timeline, like so. We can close that timeline straight away. Now you see we have this reset track here. We're going to come out of that. We're going to get a LERP rotator as we want to be doing this on the rotation. So we'll get a LERP rotator like so. And what we want to do, we want to go from the current camera position to the new position we want. So let's first decide where we want it to go. So to do that, we can go back to the viewport here. And if I add a component, I'm going to add an arrow. And I'm just going to name this one camera position reference. So anything like that, or just ref. And now you can use this arrow that we already have here, but I'm just making a new one just in case you don't have that. And then we can move this wherever you like as well. So this is how we're doing it. And you can just have it so the arrow is pointing forwards as that is the way we want the camera to point as well. So that should be like that by default. So once you've done that, we'll go back to the event graph and we'll drag and drop this in here. Out of this, we're going to get world position or world rotation, sorry. So get world rotation. So whichever way this is facing is the way we want to face the camera. You can also just use get world rotation of the player or get actor rotation. Again, this just gives us more freedom of if we want to change the direction. So if you wanted, you could rotate the arrow so it's facing this direction instead if that's where you want the arrow to point. So that's why I'm doing the arrow, just so you can change it whenever you want, like so. And so like I say, that's going into B as that's where we want to go. A is our current rotation. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click, get player controller. And actually, I'll put this up here because I want to use this later. Out of the return value, I'm going to get control rotation. The control rotation is basically our camera's rotation, and we'll put that in there like so. So it's going from the current rotation of A into our new rotation of B like so, and we're going to tick shortest path. That way it's always going to get the shortest path between these two rotations, which is good because that prevents it from breaking the code later on. Out of the get player controller again, we're going to set control rotation now. So we got it before. And we're going to set it. This new rotation is the return value of the LERP, and we're going to plug this into update. So every time the timeline updates, it's going to be updating our rotation. And this is the code done. So 
So we can just double click these to get rerun nodes if you don't want them all overlapping like that. Just to keep it nice and organized again. But again, this is the code done, so I'm just going to comment this. So I select it and hit C to comment. I'll just name this reset camera position like so. Compile, save. We can test this out. So if we hit play, we can move about, we can move the camera around like normal. Let's say we're facing this way, if I hit R, it's going to move the camera all the way back around like so. And this works whichever way we are facing. However it's done, we're always going to go back to the same position like so. So this works perfectly. So I think that'll be it for this video, we've done everything we've wanted to do. We've set it up so that we've created a system in which we can just easily reset the camera's position like so, which again is just easy for the player. It just adds that little extra something. If they get the camera stuck or they're lost or they don't know which way is forward, they can just press R, the camera's reset its position like so. So thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.